Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich is going to show you today how he painted this beautiful Prussian landscape. So let's get started. The brushes and the paints will be named in the description below. First off, you wet the paper. Keep it at a 45 degree angle and use the large mop to wet it thoroughly. In this case, he used the hockey, but you can use any kind of mop. Wet it up to the horizon line. Then he's going to use the smaller hockey and he is adding raw sienna to the background, to the sky area. Very light mix, very light strokes. Just add a little bit of raw sienna. It's going to give a little bit of warmth to your sky. Next he's taking manganese and random strokes again just to give the light and dark in the sky. Then Prussian blue and there he goes all over. A little bit of manganese again just to vary the tones and then he's got a premix of Payne's Grey Blue and Payne's Grey Black. And that's one you are going to use a lot. So make sure you have that mix ready. You can also use neutral tint, but the paint gray works better. Then at the top there, he added a strong mix of Prussian blue again, just to give a little bit more um, definition to the top side of the sky. Now he's going to start adding a little bit of paint gray again to give definition. And then we are going to use the Payne's Grey to start making the background. Just giving illusions of trees and things standing in the background. And it's going to run all over the place. That's quite fine. Later on when you tilt the paper you will see how beautifully it spreads and it creates its own little magic forest in the back. Strong mix, just dabbing it in. Isn't it amazing that the paint doesn't flow past the horizontal line? Okay, so tilt the paper and as you can see it looks rather messy but if you tilt it in various directions you can kind of guide the paint to where you want it to go so that it creates your magical forest. Another layer of the strong Payne's Grey mix. Create your trees wherever you want them to be. Notice that the ones that you painted in first now seem to be further in the background and the new ones you paint in are more to the fore foreground. Random shapes, don't be too specific because they're in a distance so you will not distinguish specific shapes. Tilt again, let the paint do its magic. If you want to, you can smooth out some of the lines, add a little bit of more paint in the top, but you don't really need to. A lot more tilting, wiggling, let the paint spread. All those different colors are now creating different layers, different shades. He's going to use a, an art secret brush that has a wedged tip at the back to score in some of the branches. But you could use a store card or the sharpened end of an old brush or even a cocktail stick to do the same thing. Now he's scoring it in while the paint is still very, very wet. You can wait a little bit, then the scoring will leave white lines. Now it is, the paint is very wet. So as he scores, it 
um, runs back into the scoring lines and that's why it's making those dark branches. You can see there on the right where the paint is a little bit drier, you can see the paper, the white of the paper coming through as he scores. So depending on how wet or how dry your paper is, you will get the, the lines that are the color of your paint or you will be able to score right down onto the paper. Don't press too hard, you don't want to damage your paper, but you need to press hard enough so that you can make the lines. Make as many lines as you want, keep them wiggly. Remember it's tree branches, so there's nothing straight about them. Now you are going to let your painting dry. Let it dry naturally. A hairdryer is going to blow the paint everywhere. Now we're going to work at the bottom part and we are going to work wet on dry. Do not wet the bottom. Use your brush and stroke lightly with the paint mix. Start with the lightest mix and go darker as you continue. He made strokes that point to the middle of the page to indicate a kind of a valley and all these strokes will form shadows on the snowy landscape. The darker shades go in the foreground and the lighter shades at the back. Keep your strokes light and varied. Here is using an ordinary store card to score in some shapes for rocks and some shadows. Because the paint is still very wet, it looks like there's not much happening, but it will dry into lighter and darker areas. And everywhere where the paint is a little bit drier, you will see that the white of the paper is starting to come through when he does the scoring. You can score in any kind of shapes that you like, as long as it kind of resembles a rocky type of landscape. And keep in mind, you want the valley to show in the middle, so let it taper down from the sides to the middle. Now it's time for the trees. And he is using the Herent Rigger. It's a fairly sturdy rigger, different from the Barbara that he normally uses and this one is really very useful if you want to create more um, solid kind of branches and you want to have a little bit more control. Wiggly lines and again you can create as many as you like. You will notice when he's painting the trees here again, the trees are all lined up to the sides, once again to emphasize the depth of the valley in the middle of the page. And he's using the Payne's Grey mix to create the trees. If you paint some trees further back, remember that they are farther away so they are less defined and they will be thinner. When you come to the foreground, your branches and your trunks will be a little bit thicker and a lot more prominent. 
so they will also be a lot darker. If you find that it's too dark at the back, you can dab out a little bit of the paint with a tissue. Also, the trees that are in the background are a lot smaller than the ones that are in the foreground. You don't want your trees to look like they are hanging in the air. So it is a good idea to ground them by just drawing very light lines underneath them. And again, try to keep the direction of the valley that you want to indicate. So bring them down from the outsides to the middle and just paint them very, very lightly. You can use the side of the brush to keep a kind of a dry brush effect, not solid lines. Add a few grasses, just to give a little bit of life to the painting, even though it's a very stark, cold landscape. Adding a few grasses just gives it a little bit of life. Add a touch of darker shadows right to the front, again to ground the painting and to help you to draw your eyes into the painting. And now we can remove the tape. Pull the tape at an angle so that you do not damage your paper. And if the tape gets stuck, you can use a hairdryer on a warm setting to blow onto the tape and that will soften the glue and make it easier to remove. And there we have our beautiful painting. Thank you so much for joining us on our watercolor journey and we hope to see you soon.